The people that choose Jesus Christ will pay a price. There are thousands of people in other parts of the world. The price they have to pay is they're ostracized from their family. In some parts of the world, they can never go any further than grammar school if they make a decision for Christ. They can never get a job above menial labor if they make a decision for Christ. But in those parts of the world, thousands upon thousands are living for Jesus Christ. In America, we've had sort of an unnatural situation. It's almost popular to follow Christ in some areas of the country now. That won't last long. There's always a price. And if you receive Christ as your Savior and try to live for him, some people are going to sneer and they're going to make fun behind your back. And in this period of conformity, we don't want to be considered too different. But he calls upon you to be different. When the gang is doing certain things you know to be wrong, you take your stand and say, no, I can't do that because I'm a Christian, because I believe in Jesus Christ. It costs something to follow Christ. And Jesus said, you better sit down and count the cost one day. You see, a big crowd was following Jesus, and he said, wait a minute, count the cost. Do you know that I'm going to die on a cross, and if you follow me, you're going to have to go die with me? Oh, we didn't know that, Jesus. We thought you were setting up a big kingdom. We were going to be in the kingdom with you. So they left him. They will, there will be the cross for you to bear before the crown. And when you do come to Jesus Christ, you're going to be tested by God. God never has anyone come to him that he doesn't test you. Some of you have made your decisions for Christ this week and already you're being tested. Temptation is coming. A friend doesn't understand the step that you've taken. Already you are filled with some doubts and weakness. This is all normal to every person that ever came to Christ. But it takes time to grow. God will test you when you come to Christ. And he demands an immediate decision. I wonder how many more sermons it would take to win you to Christ. How many more warnings will God have to give you? How many more graves will have to be dug? How many more wars will have to be fought? How many more earthquakes or tornadoes and floods will have to come before you make your decision? The thief on the cross took that one moment and said, Lord, remember me. And in that moment, Jesus said, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. That quick, you can make your decision and commitment. And remember, God loves you. He has a plan for your life. You're sinful. You're separated from God by sin. And some of the results of this sin are worry and irritability and lack of purpose in life, as well as some of the gross, immoral sins that we read about. God has provided the cross as a means for you to be forgiven of sin, but you must individually receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You and you alone in the quiet arena of your heart will have to make that decision. Charlotte Elliott was a beautiful woman and a great preacher by the name of Caesar Milan went all over Switzerland. He was put out of his church because of his faith. But once he was in England and he met this beautiful, charming young woman, she was suffering ill health. And he went up to her and asked her if she would become a Christian. And she rebuked him and said, I resent you asking me that. And she was very irritated at him. He said, I didn't mean to be offensive to you, but I only meant to tell you that God loves you and God's willing to change your life and give you peace in your heart. That night, Charlotte Elliott could not sleep. The words that the preacher spoke to her kept ringing in her ears. And during the night, she got up, got on her knees, gave her life to Christ, and she sat down and wrote the hymn that we sing every night. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as you are. You don't have to go home and change clothes. You don't have to go home and get better. You can't improve yourself. You come just like you are with all your sins, with all your failures, with all your mistakes, with all your hypocrisy. You come just as you are. He will forgive you and change you and come into your life. Now, I personally believe that Jesus is the truth. I believe that he is the embodiment of all truth. I have accepted that by faith, and when I took that step and took that stand, it changed my life. And it's very simple. And he made it so simple that you can know the truth that a blind man, a deaf man, a black man, a yellow man, a red man can come and know the truth. 
The educated man can know the truth. The uneducated can know the truth. I know people that don't have any education at all. And they know this truth. And it gives them a satisfaction and a joy. And I know professors at the great universities and I know some of the great scientists. They have come and accepted this as the truth and bowed in humility before the Christ back of science. The scripture says that God is the creator of the whole universe. He's from everlasting to everlasting. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All of that is created by God. By the word of the Lord were all the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Think of it, the breath of his mouth. He created all those stars and planets and worlds that we see through telescopes and we see on our television as the astronauts flash their pictures back here. One of the world's most distinguished scientists after working for years on the theories of cosmic beginnings came to believe that there was a God. Yes, back of this whole universe is Almighty God. The scripture says that God is the creator of the whole universe. He's from everlasting to everlasting. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All of that is created by God. By the word of the Lord were all the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Think of it, the breath of his mouth. He created all those stars and planets and worlds that we see through telescopes and we see on our television as the astronauts flash their pictures back here. One of the world's most distinguished scientists after working for years on the theories of cosmic beginnings came to believe that there was a God. Yes, back of this whole universe is Almighty God. And we're here to, this week to talk about God and to talk about what He can do in our lives and our community and change us because He's also a God of love. Now the Bible teaches that God is not only the Creator but God is a Spirit. God is a Spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in Spirit, said Jesus to the woman at the well. He's also unchanging. I'm the Lord, I change not. Think of it, all these centuries, all these millenniums. There's no variableness, neither shadow of turning with him. He is just the same as he was a million years ago. He's just the same as he'll be a million years from tonight. God never changes. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 8, God is love. Now the word that is used there for love is different than our word that we use often. It's agape. It means a deep love that we know nothing about until we know God. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, Jeremiah says. A popular song a few years ago was, I can't live in a world without love. You don't have to. God loves you. Whoever you are, whatever your background, whatever you've done, God loves you. And if there's one thing I want you to remember after this crusade is over, if you forget everything else, you remember that God loves you. He has the hairs of your head number. He's interested in you and he loves you. And he wants to forgive your sins. He wants to save you. He wants to take you to heaven.